Hey, what's the matter there? Uh, did you get tired of part six, uh, Pet Psychic on KSAX? Not interesting enough for you? Oh man, well, oh, I'm, I got a psychic, pet psychic vision. Oh, there's a bulldog. Oh, he's mad. He, he, he's mad about tax dollars getting stolen and, 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 and people get above the law that the bulldog wants to bite somebody. Okay. So, thanks for tuning in to us instead of pet psychic. Oh, maybe you can tape it. Watch it later. Okay. Criminal law handbook here. This is written by attorneys. All right. The reason we're telling you about this is that uh, we went through the, the uh, report that Deputy Brandon Chaffins uh, <laughs> wrote or butchered or uh, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. You know what he did with that report. You know what his intentions were. But let's, let's look at how the experts describe this, okay? Use of arrest reports in criminal cases. Arrest reports are almost always one-sided. They recite only what the police claim took place and may include only witness statements that support the police theory. What's the police theory here? We can't stand Judd. He makes us do our job. So we're going to make him look as bad as possible. That's my theory. Brandon. While they are generally not admissible as evidence in a trial, <clears throat> arrest reports can have a major impact in criminal cases. Not only do arrest reports often determine what charges prosecutors file, in other words, oh, let's see, I don't know, bill displaying improper plates, maybe? What's the statute number? Brandon, quick. <laughs> but they also but they also may play a key role in how much bail is required uh, the outcome of preliminary hearings where hearsay evidence is often admissible see so if there was a preliminary hearing if Bill said I did not do that and lied again then he'd get a preliminary hearing and at that point they'd look at that the judge would look at that and say well Bill says he um, it never lies and that um, he didn't do it so um, okay well look at the police report oh, Oh, I can't believe that Judd would, oh boy, did Judd do that? Did Judd do this? Oh, how can Judd act that way? Oh, this is terrible. And then somebody like Judge John Stashel would say, I'm throwing this out. The willingness of the prosecutor to plea bargain, see? See, it's important, see? It's not admissible in trial, but all kinds of prosecutors. The willingness of the prosecutor to plea bargain. So John Lervick right now, is up there in his little office building. I don't know if the plate glass is still reverberating or not from my bullhorn session. But he's up there and, you know, with the sonic blast coming at him, he's up there thinking, you know, uh, uh, do I want to file charges? Uh, I'm looking at Brandon's preliminary report and what's that I hear out there? Uh, oh no, they're going to make me do my job. Well, oh boy, that Judd's a drip. Look at this Judd Hoff, what, how he's acting, but by golly, that, that video, it, it's just so plain obvious that he's doing, oh, what's that noise again? Oh, I, oh, I, do, I, do, I never thought I'd ever have to charge a state senator, much less our old sheriff. Oh, what now? What am I going to do? That's John Larvick. <clears throat> so, that's what they do. And I have not just witnessed this uh, practice of shading police reports, complaints, all this. Uh, we got a neighbor around my neighborhood named uh, uh, Jim Richards. He come up here from the city, so he don't count. And um, he uh, got himself up here and joined the sheriff's posse, boy. He was going to find himself a nice little pastime, throw some clout around. He liked to give my mom rides to church. He come, I didn't like him because every time he come over, he'd glare at me. Even though I work my butt off, I got calluses. Um, he would say, why doesn't Judd have a job? You know, well, Judd, Judd ain't going to get ripped off anymore. That's why. And, uh, and he'd say to my mom, he'd sit and he'd talk, he'd talk out his ass to my mom about me. I put up with all this crap for like a year. Then one time, you know, because I cut up steel, I got my acetylene torch ring sitting by the corner of my garage. He comes pulling in to get my mom from church. He pulls up ahead and he backs out. He, you know, this trash talking guy who I let hang out with my mom who I take care of watch over anyway she's pretty independent but uh, I let him do all this crap I feel like I'm being real patient with him because uh, I don't like him 
Uh, but, uh, you know, he's doing, trying to do something nice, give my mom right to church. So I put up with the, his uh, political leanings and affiliations and, and his, you know, annoying insistence on, you know, playing cop. Um, th but I found out that they don't just give sheriff's posses members, uh, they don't just give them uh, Cocoa Puffs badge. They give them uh, a free membership to the Blue Code it's a junior membership, but they give them, Sir Pico could tell you about this, gives them a free membership to the Blue Code, which means, oh, goody, what did I get in my cereal today? Oh, like, oh and look, it looks like a real, real cop badge. You know, oh, you know, when somebody screws with me, they're going to they're gonna take my side. Oh, boy. So he backs over this codger, Jim Richardson, badge number plastic out of a box of Cocoa Puffs, and he backs over my acetylene torch. He could have blown the joint up. Okay, he backs over my friggin' torch kit. Knocks it over. It gets wrapped around his bumper. What did I run over? He backs up, drags it through my yard, runs over the, the acetylene. He backs out the driveway, and I'm, oh, I'm watching this. I run out there. I'm like, you know, hey, man, stop. He's halfway down my long driveway, so I'm like, stop. You know, I'm indicating stop. I'm not even yelling. He, there's that little ne'er-do-well. So he puts it in drive. And, comes screaming up to me. Just what hits me. Okay. And I move over and I, I pull, he pulls up and he goes, what do you want? This is my yard. And I say, well, you know, geez, you know, you could have broke my stuff over there. I mean, we, you don't even know if it's broke and you're leaving. And he says, I can do whatever I want to do. And then I thought he, it'd be cute if he just, because that's what he really said. But he should have said, I've got me a Cocoa Pops badge, you little son of a bitch, and I'll do whatever I want. And he backed out of there. I was like, I have no recourse but to call the police, okay, because he broke my stuff. I went and looked at it. He broke it. Troutman comes out, looks at it, cuts his finger on the broken gauge glass for my pressure gauges that are laying in the slush. And I tell him, you know, I can't believe you do this. It's like leaving the scene of an accident. I get the police report. I go, I go get the report, the sheriff's report. Okay. Looked a lot like the one we went through earlier. I'm out of control. He left because he was afraid that I was escalating and getting crazy. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Doesn't that sound familiar? Now you know from an expert. Now you know from the experts what they're doing when they do that. And when they, when they screw with you and they do that, then you know that they're on Bill Ingebrigtsen's side and they're not on John Q. Public's side. Next time. Okay. Hello, Alexandria, Minnesota and the surrounding area and anybody else who is interested in law and justice, justice and, and parity and uh, people being treated the same and fair no matter who they are, creed, income level, Political persuasion, everything, you know, other persuasions too for all of these people who are a little funny. They've got to live too. Um, we got a, a situation in our county here and in our community where we have a former sheriff by the name of Bill Ingebretson. And many of you, uh, we've had 100 hits, I think we've had 50 hits in the last uh, day at least, last. It, it's starting to snowball a bit. And uh, if you haven't watched the other videos first of, of, of Hoff. Uh, Huff catches Senator Ingebretson willfully breaking the law. Watch those first and then come back to this. But for those of you who have already done your homework, um, let's go, let's just go up to where um, I'm in Traveler's Inn and I confront Ingebretson. You'll notice in the video that I approached him and I say, you know, hey, how's it going? You know, I'm, I think anybody would admit I'm being pretty damn friendly. Um, here's what Bill says in his, which you can look at it. Um, Terry's going to scan it. And it's all going to be up, but this is this is uh, Brandon Chafin, major disappointment deputy. Terry told me, don't don't think he's going to do right by this. Don't think he's don't don't even think he's like a separate species, man. Don't get don't think he's going to do the right thing. You're he's, you're going to be very disappointed. I thought this guy looks nice. He looks like a nice guy, you know. I wouldn't expect him to you know, be unfair and, and print one side, not the other. Bill Ingebrigtsen is the one breaking the law. Three quarters of this report is about my behavior, okay? A citizen who 
doesn't want to see uh, dealers and, and senators running around, not paying for the registration, just like you pay for your registration. Did you buy your tabs? If you were driving around with your tabs expired or gone or different plate or wrong plate, you they would leave you on the side of the road until you had a ride or you get a ticket. I mean, they, they would you would not get away with this. He did, so far. Brandon Chafin's report says... He said, suddenly this person, later determined to be Hoff, okay, in the video, he, he says that, yeah, oh yeah, he does remember me. I said, I'm John Hoff, you remember me? He says, yeah. Later determined to be this friggin' nut that he already acknowledged knowing. Another lie. I never lie. Do you remember that from the first videos? I never lie. Wilford Brimley for Quake Roads, and I won't get any older and I won't ever die either. I'm going to be around this county sucking up perks just like Quaker Oatmeal for a long time. Did I get some on my mustache? So, he did know me. He indicates to the deputy, I don't know that guy. Yeah, actually he did. He was sitting there eating with my cousin, who I greeted politely. And uh, then he says, Ingebretson commented to Hoff that he had interrupted a meeting. Where did Ingebretson say, you're interrupting my meeting? He didn't. He said, it was private. Okay. He said it was a private conversation. He never said I interrupted. He might have felt like I was interrupting, yes. But he never, quote, commented to Hoff that he had interrupted a meeting. Wilford, did you lie again? Shame on you. He said Hoff's reply was that he, Ingebretson, was a public figure and he had to talk to him. He said that Hoff's reply, me, was that he, Ingebretson, was a public figure. Yeah, I said that. Here's what I said. I said, yeah, you're a public uh, official. Would you care to give a vague idea? Mm -hmm. Ellipses, da, 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 eh? I said, would you, you're a public official, you know, would you care to give a vague idea you know, to show up to this morning? Does that sound to you like my reply was, he is a public figure and he has to talk to me? That's what Bill said, I said. My reply, Hoff's reply, I'm Hoff. Hoff's reply was that he was a public figure and that he had to talk to him. That was a reply, it says. That means that a reply means that's words coming out of my mouth. Guess what? I didn't put those there. Bill did. Did I say that? Wilfred, oh boy, what are they going to say now? Now they're going to know you lied. Maybe you just started this because you said you never, you never lie. Well, Wilfred, come clean, Wilfred. Wilfred Brimley. According to Ingebrigtsen,